on this video I will be replacing the clutch fluid. This clutch is activated hydraulically and the clutch itself is submerged in the engine's oil supply. It is a wet clutch. This is the specific braid of the brake fluid I will be using. It's a DOT4 and if you ever had a doubt which fluid to use, you can always read that on the top of the reservoir which is where your fluid is and take a look how burned out mine is it's supposed to look like this this is nice and clear this is way burned out it's a dark brown so let's replace it so on this Yamaha Royal Star Tour de Lax from 2009 you have a set of tools that you can use and if you still have them then they could be very useful to perform this operation so let's let's get started with that so here is the content of all the tools that I found with this motorcycle so now I'm going to use this Allen wrench that was provided with this with the tools with this motorcycle to unscrew this cylinder cover here. Let's see how easy that is. Alright. The first screw is loosened up. And then there are four of these cylinder covers. And each of them should have a number assigned to them because they cannot be changed around switched around. Also, it is not recommended to drive the motorcycle without these covers because they do hold the cylinder drain plugs. So, do not ride it. Do not ride your motorcycle without it. Also, all the screws that you may gather up from unscrewing it it's important to put them in something like this or even any other box that you may have. Let's say a box that is used for storing pills per se. And you can find that in Walgreens or CVS. I'm using this kind of box and this is how I'll keep my screws all organized. All right, and here it is. Next, once we remove this cover, we will open up this little rubber piece in here. And here it is. Next, you will need uh, this kind of clear tubing. And here it is, as described. 516 INOD or 316 INID. Alright, so now we're gonna take our tubing and a pair of scissors and just cut a length of it so then one end can be uh, connected to our bleeding valve which is right in here. Hold on, let me show it to you. So here is where our bleeding valve is right down this way. So I have to remove this cylinder cover here because otherwise you otherwise I wouldn't have access to this bleeding valve. Now I do. So now I can connect this clear tubing in here right in there and the other end will be submerged into a clean container or a bottle. Alright so now once I cut a piece of this tubing here I can connect it to my bleeding valve and this is a really tight fit as I see it it kind of comes on all right I got it on but I like to get it deeper a little deeper if the tubing is too tight and if it's not fitting onto the bleeding valve you can warm it up to soften its tip a little Great. 
So now it is fully on, let me show you. So here it is, it's connected. And the other end goes to this box down here. Yeah, and down here you also see my instructions that I prepared so then I know I carry out the process all properly and as I should. So there it is. Next, you want to make sure to turn the motorcycle handlebars all the way to the right. Now, let's remove this top cover from the reservoir. Make sure that the area is absolutely clean, that there are no debris anywhere near that can fall inside there, because if they do, they could travel down the tubes and cause some damage that could be more expensive. Place your screws nicely, so then you know where they are, you don't have to look for them. And here is the top cover. Here is the diaphragm plate. And the diaphragm itself. Now you should never really work on this with your bare hands because this brake fluid is very harmful. You do not want to even sniff it because apparently it can contain asbestos, which is not so good for you. Now, and here's another word of caution. Everything that this brake fluid gets in touch with, it leaves permanent marks. So do not let this drop on your motorcycle anywhere, on on your paint job, because if it will, that's it. Uh, you should uh, also keep a bucket of some water or soap, because if you happen to drop any of that fluid on any of the parts of the motorcycle, you can quickly wash it off, as quickly as you can. Take some of it out. See how bad it is? Oh my gosh. As you can see, I also covered my motorcycle with a plastic foil to protect it from accidental spillage. There. You can also clean the diaphragm, the diaphragm plate and the reservoir cover with a lint-free cloth. I promise the next time I will wear the gloves like I should. Next, let's continue draining the burned out fluid from the reservoir. Alright, let's get this goo out of here. The reason I am cleaning the reservoir so thoroughly is because there was goo at the bottom of it. I also removed the burned out fluid from the reservoir so I don't have to bleed it through the tubing. When removing the burned out fluid from the reservoir, make sure you don't push any air down through the tubing through this hole here. If air gets through there, your clutch will feel spongy when pressed. It could also stop the clutch from proper operation. All right, so now, so now, since it's clean, nice and clean, no goo, let's add some of the clean and brand new brake fluid, DOT4. Now, this should come from a fresh and open bottle. That is because this brake fluid has a tendency to absorb moisture really, really fast. So now I opened the bottle, it was sealed, so I know it's fresh. And I just bought it.
we can now place the diaphragm with the reservoir cover on top of the reservoir. The reason being is because when we bleed it, it's very common that it can squirt out of here anywhere it wants to, which could cause some damage to the paint of our motorcycle. I will now remove the tubing from the banjo bolt, also called a bleeding valve, responsible for the fluid transfer through our clutch hydraulic system. This bolt is hollow with a small opening on its side and upon turning it, it will allow our brake fluid to bleed out or leak out. Using a box and wrench allows to grab onto all faces of the bolt, thus preventing it from being stripped what could happen in case of an open-end wrench. Upon inserting the box-end wrench on the bleed valve or banjo bolt, I am now reinserting the tubing so I can start the brake fluid bleeding process. Alright, so now we are ready to start the process of bleeding. What we have to do is squeeze our clutch just, just a, a few, few times. times. One, two, and three. And then we have to squeeze it again, but we have to hold it. And once we're holding it, we have to go down here, and then we have to open this bleed valve. We have to turn it to open it. And then once we do that, our clutch may may push inward even farther or you you will feel like a pressure loss which is okay don't let it go because if you will then it will draw the air to the system and then you have to start the bleeding process from the beginning because there's air in there and air is your enemy in any brake system or or hydraulic clutch system you don't want you do not want it there so there it is i'm gonna have to hook up this camera somewhere hold on So here's how we break the blades. I'm going to be squeezing the clutch here. So one, two, three, four, and I'm holding it. I'm not letting it go of it. I'm holding the clutch. Now I'm opening the valve. All right. Got it up. Okay, so there it is. It's coming. All right, there it goes. Closing it. Now the valve is closed, and I can release the clutch. Boom, I released it. It bounced back. So now again, pump it a couple of times. One, two, three, four. Hold it. Open. There it goes. Close. Squeeze the clutch. One, two, three, four. Hold the clutch. Open the bleed valve. Let it bleed. Close the bleed valve. Squeeze the clutch. One, two, three, four. Hold the clutch. Open the bleed valve. Let it bleed. Close the bleed valve. Release the clutch. One, two, three, four. Hold it. Open. Close. One, two, three, four. Close. One, two, three, four. Close. One, two, three, four. Hold it. Open. Let it drain. Close. Squeeze. One, two, three, four. Hold it. Open. Close. Release. Squeeze. One, two, three, four. Open. Close. Release. One, two, three, four. Hold the clutch. Open the bleed valve. Let it drain. Close the bleed valve. Release. Let's check the amount of brake fluid in the reservoir. Alright, so we dropped a little bit, so let's add some more.
I am adding it through a funnel to avoid spillage. Put the diaphragm and the reservoir cover back on top of the reservoir. So let's continue. One, two, three, four. Open. Let it lead. Close. Repeat. One, two, three, four. Hold the clutch. Open the bleed valve. Let it bleed. Close the bleed valve. Release the clutch. Squeeze. One, two, three, four. Hold the clutch. Open the bleed valve. Close the bleed valve. Release the clutch. Remember to periodically check the amount of brake fluid in the reservoir during the bleeding process. If you were to run out of the brake fluid in the reservoir, it will cause the air to be sucked in into the hydraulic system. The air in the hydraulic system will make the clutch unoperable. It will make it feel very spongy and you will have to start the bleeding process from the beginning. So keep checking on the amount of brake fluid in the reservoir during the bleeding process. Let's check the amount of brake fluid in the reservoir again. So let's add some more. Once the reservoir was filled out with the brake fluid, put the diaphragm and the reservoir cover back on top of the reservoir. And now, let's, let's do some more. It's a, a very clean brake fluid is coming out, so it appears to be good, and the old one appears to be pushed out, but a few more tries. So, there you go. So while you're doing this, one, two, three, four, and you're holding that clutch, when you open that big valve, you can feel how the pressure is dropping in the, in the clutch handle. Pressure just dropped. Now I close the big valve, I can pump again, pressure arises. That's it. Okay, so now I can see a very clean fluid that starts to come out. Therefore, all the burnout fluid is out of the system. So let's move to the next step. So the next step will be to check the feel of the clutch. If it feels spongy, means that there is air in the system and then you have to bleed from the beginning. But if it feels nice and firm and it comes back as it should, and it comes back strong without the spongy feeling, then that means you're good. Let's check it out. So I am squeezing it here. And it feels great. It feels like it should with no spongy feeling. So I feel confident that it is correct and as it should be. Now, what's we done bleeding? The hydraulic uh, clutch system here, we can remove that pipe, but without making a mess the way I like to do it Again, I should have gloves on which I don't, but I'm gonna put my finger on top here closing that hole and Removing that from here. So this will prevent a droppage from that little brake fluid that is still in the hose So I'm pulling it gently so I don't get any droppage and I didn't and there we go. Now I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, so that bleeding valve right here, it has to be actually tightened to a very specific force. Six Newton meters or 53 inch pounds. Let's do it. We will need a torque wrench to do that. 
So I got this great torque wrench because I was hoping that I will be able to use it to properly tighten the uh, bleeding valve on the motorcycle too. I was supposed to tighten it to 53 inch pounds. And unfortunately, it turns out that this particular wrench for only 20 bucks at, I think, AutoZone allows me to tighten it, but I start at 100 inch pounds at the minimum. And unfortunately, can't apply it to this repair. So this is a pretty good torque wrench, very inexpensive, although it has a rather bad reviews. So you're better off testing it before you actually start using it. Well, I can use it. So I'm just gonna post it online for free. If any of you guys want it, just let me know. I send it to you, free shipping, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking around too much today, but uh, I'm gonna have to go and get a new one. They're pretty expensive though, but I'll get it somewhere. So at this point, let's move to the next step. So let's start putting things together. Let's start from putting this little rubber piece in place because I already tightened it as it was. However, I will have to go get the actual torque wrench and then do it properly. For now, this is what we're gonna get. So here is this, and we're gonna put it nice and back as it was. And there we are. All right. And now we can start putting the other parts. Here's one. See, a lot of tools like these, including the wrenches I was using and that very handful box that separates my screws so nicely, you can get at places like Goodwill and any other thrift store. All you gotta do is to show up a couple of times and eventually you find different kinds of treasures. Next step is to add some, to level out the fluid in the reservoir. All right, let's do it. So if, if you, you look, look at the, the reservoir here, you notice it says lower and there's a little mark. Now the motorcycle is not leveled right now and it has to be leveled, which will happen when I sit on it, uh, to see the proper amount of the brake fluid in it. So, all I have to do is to fill it up and I should never let the clutch flow in here to drop below this mark. So when you sit on the motorcycle and it is perfectly leveled and you see that the fluid is dropping below this mark, that means it's time to add some or maybe even bleed the whole system like we just did. But if you keep dropping it too often, that's actually concerning and it could mean that the hydraulic system could be leaking the brake fluid. And if that's the case, some additional repairs could be required. So let's add some more fluid now. And let's just fill it up as much as we can here. All right. All right, now let's add this fluid in. Oh wait, that's the wrong fluid. All right, so now it's nice and leveled. Now once I'm sitting on it, but I have to be extra careful now, not to drop anything or anything like that. Not to spill it anywhere too, that's the worst. Just a little more. And I think that's plenty. The bike has its handlebar, handlebar all the way turned to the right. Now put back the diaphragm, the diaphragm plate and the reservoir cover on top of the reservoir and screw them back together. 
This completes the replacement of the brake fluid in the hydraulic clutch system in 2009 Yamaha Royal store toward the lax. Now go get some ice cream. You've truly earned it.